unbridled liberty You see it's all just unity Polar ends affect the tea And just as we are prisoners of each extreme Can we escape from each excess? Welcome to Mind and Soul Matters, I'm Farah Feeney. Through conversations with everyday people, Mind and Soul Matters aims to broaden our understanding of mental health and spirituality, and to deepen our insights into the challenges and meaning of our lives. Music is a universal language, a medium through which emotions are expressed and felt. Khalil Gibran described music as the language of the spirit, It opens the secret of life, bringing peace, abolishing strife. And recent studies show music can lift our mood and reduce anxiety. I am delighted to be talking with Shamim Tahiri Lee, a musician whose career spans over a decade as a singer, songwriter and producer, with an extensive list of nominations and awards. Shamim has supported major international artists such as Michael Bolton and Belinda Carlisle, just to name a few, and undertaken tours in Australia, the USA and Canada. The Sydney Morning Herald describes Shamim's music as an explosion of soul, taking you on a journey to a world full of positivity, love and understanding. Let's find out how Shamim has used her music to navigate through life's challenges and how music can be a ladder for our soul, a means whereby we are lifted up. Welcome, Shamim. It's wonderful to have you here. Thanks for having me. We just heard Beautiful Soul, such meaningful lyrics with a powerful message. Love your music. And one of the songs I keep coming back to is Strawberry. Strawberry. That's funny. Um, That's a a gig favourite, that one. And I wonder if it's because um, people relate to it. It's a very personal song for me. I I have a birthmark on my face. It's about the size of 50 cent coin and um, it's quite conspicuous and I I always get still to this day a lot of questions about it and I remember as a child wanting to cover it up with makeup and hide it away and try and blend in a bit more and be normal and um, at one point I just thought why? Why am I doing this I, it's, it's part of me, it's part of who I am, it makes me unique and maybe I should just embrace it and just flaunt it. And uh, so the song is really all about that and I think it's that story that people relate to because I think everyone has their own, in inverted commas, strawberry, you know, um, Absolutely. in their life, something about them that maybe they're a bit shy about or maybe they used to be shy about but it's, it's them and they, they want to be able to be free with it. Imagine how the world would be if it were so That everybody acted like each other's clones And they put me down sometimes, they even make me cry But I'll stand my mark on life until the day I die Yeah, strawberry, I'm not afraid of what they say The other day I was feeling low, flat, deflated, and psychologists have bad days too. (laughs) And I listened to your music and I felt uplifted. I felt at peace. And I wanted to know, how do you produce music that is, as described by the Sydney Morning Herald, full of positivity, love and understanding? What is the inspiration behind your music? Basically, there are two main I guess, uh, inspirations for my music. One is just life, just life experiences and personal experiences and um, just being expressing sort of what's going through my heart, I guess. Um, And the other one is sort of looking um, socially with social consciousness at the world 
and also with a, a spiritual framework that I have um, and thinking, okay, how can I tell a story about what's happening in the world? Let me look at these, these issues that are in the world, these challenges, um, these inequalities. How can I tell a story about them? How can I express them? How can I um, poke at them and even um, suggest some ideas <laughs> about them? Um, so that's the, that's the other real inspiration for my music. And I guess a lot of that spiritual framework comes from the Baha'i teachings that I've embraced. All right. Do you have some examples of how your spiritual uh, beliefs worldview comes into your music? Yeah. Um, so, for example, on my most recent record um, is a song called Moderation, which is about how we really live in a world of extremes. And um, there's a lot of groups that are sort of opposite to each other being pitted against each other. Like um, it's like religionists versus scientists, for example, mm-hmm. um, or different political groups, you know, pitted against each other um, uh, yeah, the um, different classes of people pitted against each other. And I guess in, in this song, I'm asking why do they have to be against each other? Is everything really black and white? Is everything binary? Is everything a dichotomy? Or is there some, is there some way we can meet in the middle? Is, is that actually where we'll find more answers? So that, that's, for example, one one example. Yeah. yeah. And a couple of other songs that come to my mind, um, mm. It's a Show. Is that ju- Just a Show? Just, just a, a Show. show. Yeah. Can you tell us about that song? Because that was another song that really resonated with me. Yeah. Just a Show, it's from the same recent record. And that um, that's actually interesting because that comes from both inspirations because uh-huh. it's a personal inspiration of being a musician um, that's, that song is about the dark side of the music and arts industry, mm. the, um, the side that's a bit seedy, the side that's exploitative of people. Um, yeah, so that, that's what that song is about. So it's, it's partly my experience but also a bit of a commentary on how can this beautiful world of you know, art and you know, entertainment should be a beautiful thing, how has it become perverted in mm. some ways? And how do you personally reconcile those two worlds in terms of you're a musician and, mm-hmm. and as you said, that industry in some ways has been perverted mm. uh, and, and I did read that even even simple things like you don't like wearing high heels and you don't <laughs> like wearing makeup yes. but in this world of performance mm. there are some things that you've had to compromise as simple as wearing makeup and wearing high heels. Yeah. So how do you reconcile these two worlds and decide where you draw the line? It's so difficult <laughs> mm. and I feel like I'm constantly navigating that and I think um, very recently I think I've given up on the high heels. <laughs> I, I used to do like, you know, I'm going to stick through this, I'm going to try and look beautiful and nah, nah, nah. And recently maybe it's to do with becoming a mother and I just can't be bothered anymore. <laughs> um, and maybe one day I'll do an Alicia Keys and throw away the makeup too, who knows. But it, it, I think it's constant navigation. I'm still figuring it out. Um, I guess... One thing I really hope or I cling to is that to me everything is a weapon that you can be used for good or evil, um, just like social media. You know, you can use it for good, you can yeah. use it for very negative causes as well um, in very harmful ways. And I think music is the same. It, um, it can so easily drag people down or it can be used to um, basically spread really negative messages, um, whether directly or sort of more insidiously. And, oh, you know, like, like, how can I use music as a weapon for good and make sure that I'm always, you know, doing my best to stay true to that? Mm, mm. Mm. And it is, it is about embracing ourselves as we are and what we're comfortable with, because that's mm. what I'm hearing. You, uh, you've decided to throw away the high heels <laughs> because that's not who you truly are. So you've embraced mm. who you truly are mm. rather than trying to conform to what is expected. Mm. And... Yeah, and I guess as a mum, what I keep coming back to is, as you said, there are these um, very subtle messages in some, um, you know, pop music. Mm. And as a mum, being very, very conscious of what my child even listens to, not only what I listen to. Mm. And that's why I, I love your music, because really the message 
is so powerful and meaningful and it's about us really internalizing some of that in our own personal life too so thank you for sharing that columns and pillars of grandeur two gladiators have wanted to also ask about the impact of uh, music throughout your life because we know there is a lot of research now that music uh, can be uplifting, music can help our mood and uh, music can be a ladder for our soul. Mm -hmm. So how have you used your music to help you through your journey in life? Mm. Wow. Huge question. I I feel like you're asking me about my whole life journey there. It is a big question, yes. Because I feel like, and maybe this sounds silly, that music has been a soundtrack to my life, but um, it very much has. Yeah, I just, I remember the time that I really started writing songs was when I was a teenager, Um, sort of just entering that, you know, adolescent stage. And I needed it to be able to process all the emotions that I was feeling. You know, you have so many emotions when you're in high school, when you're a teenager. And um, I would just come home and I would just bang, bang, bang on the piano and like write all these lyrics and I would carry a pen with me everywhere and I'd just write on things, you know, like I'd keep a notebook, but if if for some reason I didn't have my notebook, I'd write on napkins. I was just expressing, you know, and it really helped me. And I remember once I wrote a really... It was quite a dark song. I'm not quite sure what I wrote it, but, you know, it was a very, very dark song. And um, I performed it in front of my music class at school because we had to do a performance for each other that day. And my teacher said, are you quite all right? (laughs) And I said, yeah, I'm fine (laughs) like this. And I really meant it. I think being able to express all the feelings into the music meant that I could then let them go and then be happy and chirpy and, and get on with it, you know? Mm. Um, so that, that stands out to me because it was a time that I wrote really profusely and a lot of music. And I think it was because I was a teenager basically. And, um, but then there've been other times in my life where I've gone through something really difficult and it's been, um, Yeah, another way of processing and a a source of comfort even to be able to put words to something. And uh, even after I've written something, to be able to sing it over and over again has almost um, helped me, yeah, to just move through whatever it was, like um, a time when I I felt betrayed by uh, someone who was very close to me, a mentor of mine. And, you know, another time, you know, other times I should say where I've, for example, supported a loved one um, with mental illness and it had a really um, dragging down effect on me as well. Um, and yeah, um, being able to put put it into music really helped me to just, it was almost like, um, you know, navigating through, uh, uh, I'm, you know what I'm seeing in my mind? I'm seeing Sleeping Beauty and that, that maze of thorns mm-hmm. um, that the prince has to cut through to get to, to her, like, you know, to navigate these negative feelings um, and to be able to find the other side of them. Wow. So through creating music and expressing it, uh, and that's Mm. been your way of navigating through some of those challenges. Yeah, I would say that has been one really major way. Music and poetry um, has been a really major way that has helped me, yeah, to navigate the challenges. And it's, but it's also helped me to um, sort of express the beauty and positivity too and I have written some songs that were just from these moments of you know I was just having a natural high and I was like let's write a song right now (laughs) you know let's capture this moment and yeah there's a few songs you'll you'll probably know which ones they are if you listen to my records which are um, capturing those moments of like just pure joy as well yeah. mm. so you've captured the highs and the lows well, through your them. music all of them <laughs> yeah. a, a way of expressing and and this is what the research supports as well that it's not only through listening to music 
that our mood is lifted or we, you know, if we're feeling anxious, we feel calmer, which is what I personally experience Mm. when I listen to your music. But it's also through creating music. You know, music therapy is um, a lot of evidence behind that, that creating music. And Mm. and for some people it might be music as it is for you, but for others it might be through other forms of creativity, um, which is really expressing their soul. And through that expression it can help our our mind and our soul. Yeah. Um, so a couple of songs that I I want to come to back mm. to, one of them is I Love You But. So mm. is because that is one of the songs where I feel there is like a lot of express expressing some tough times. Yeah. So tired of You know, the, the great thing about difficult things that happen to you in life is that you produce a lot. I don't know, I produce a lot. But I think this one one betrayal of this was a time that I felt really betrayed by somebody close to me. I, I felt that they, um, I thought that I knew who they were, but then all of a sudden I didn't anymore. And they just did some things that were very out of character and um, it left me very, very lost. And... Uh, I wrote so many songs about this one thing and it's so funny to watch the journey of these songs Um, and it starts as early as um, my self-titled album which is my second record it goes through disappointment it goes through anger goes through um, a sense of loss and trying to want to forgive but you know struggle with that Um, then uh, a state of thankfulness for the other things I did have, even though this thing really, really was terrible, you know, that trying to, you know, cling to the positive things. And then this song was kind of this, you know, yeah, it was a trying to, wanting to reconcile, but finding it, still finding it hard, being able to separate a person from their actions to say, I love you, but I don't like the, the things you're doing you know so that's that's kind of what what it's exploring there wow yeah a whole uh, therapeutic process you've gone through <laughs> by writing these various songs yeah and, and like the whole process of grief disappointment yeah. hurt sadness anger yeah and uh forgiveness did you come to forgiveness i i'm getting there i think <laughs> So I think that's a hard part that we all struggle with. We yeah. all have situations, um, perhaps people that we have felt hurt mm. by their actions mm. and how we travel from that hurt, anger, sadness yeah. to forgiveness. That's, mm. Do you have any answers for us? Um, when I think I've reached forgiveness, I'll let you know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know, because I think it's very easy to say, say I forgive you, mm. but to in your heart to really feel that you've let go, you know, and you're no longer harboring um, judgment against a person or um, resentment against a person. And I don't know if I can honestly say I have 100% left behind all of that resentment and all of that hurt. I think I've left behind a lot of it. I'm a lot more understanding now. Um, But I I would love to be able to, you know, completely purge it. And and I'm a human. I haven't yet. Mm. It's a journey. Yeah, Yeah, it it is is. a journey. And one of my role models when it comes to forgiveness is uh, Nelson Mandela. Mm. for him to step out of that prison after so many years and to forgive and I don't know how he did it but oh. yeah that's that's one of my role models it's incredible and yeah. I think sometimes when we have a higher calling maybe it, it helps um and maybe that's what we have to use <laughs> maybe that that's what I have to draw on as a higher calling to be able to forgive truly mm. Mm. can you expand on that what a higher calling to reach forgiveness might look like? I think Nelson Mandela, he wasn't forgiving just for himself. He was forgiving for the healing of all of humanity. Wow. Really? Wasn't he? Mm. Um, because he was, trying to, he was trying to show through his being that 
you know, in order to heal, this is what we need to do. And um, maybe because I'm just forgiving for me and one other person, <laughs> um, maybe it's not enough. But actually, in a way, now it's nice that we're having this conversation. This is good. It's good therapy. <laughs> now that we're having this conversation, it's just making me think. You know, if we treated our personal problems as if they were humanity's problems and thought like if I want humanity to learn how to forgive then I do as well um, then I think we would go a long way wouldn't we to wow. cleaning things up in this world wow that is powerful mm. I, I'm, I'm processing some <laughs> personal things here too so this has been therapeutic for, for, for both of us uh, yeah I guess if we see it as a uh, a small, like our personal mm. journey, whatever we go through, whatever struggles it is, whether it is hurt, forgiveness, um, whatever it is that we are trying to work on, we see it as a small symbol of what can happen at a bigger level. It, it does mm. all start with small yeah. deeds that leads to um, bigger things for humanity, I yeah. guess. Yeah, mm. yeah. Wow. The ocean is made of many drops. Yes, exactly. And we started off by talking about your music and uh, music being a ladder for our soul and we've ended up having a conversation about Nelson Mandela. There you go. The power of music. Yeah. That's it. And tell us about um, what's been happening more recently in your life. You're a mum of two. I'm a mum of two. And what's that been like? It's been like a roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> it's wonderful and it's so challenging and... It's a constant learning curve and you're constantly discovering things about yourself and about these two other human beings that have somehow magically come into this world through you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been, it's been incredible. What have you discovered about yourself since being a mum? I've discovered that I am a lot stronger than I could have ever imagined. <laughs> wow. And that, um, you know, I think we... we we keep on getting stronger and stronger. There's some times I've been thinking, oh my gosh, I cannot do this anymore. This is just so hard. And then, you know, somehow I'll get used to it. Mm. And then I'll, and then, then the next challenge will come and I'll have to face that. Um, yeah, I think being a parent is a, it's, I almost sometimes wonder if it's part of the cycle of life for our own development as you know as individuals it's very character building <laughs> absolutely absolutely and I think yeah. one of the things my children have been sent into my life for is to teach me patience absolutely mm -hmm. I, I think patience is a universal parent virtue that we have to is it? <laughs> develop I, I, I haven't met a parent who hasn't said that they haven't learned patience you know right, right. Yeah. so I'm not the only one yeah well, thank you so much, I mean, Where can people find out more about your music? Um, best place is probably my, my website, shamimmusic.com, and that will link you to all my socials and um, I guess whichever streaming platform or platform you enjoy listening to music on, um, it's very likely that my, my music is there as well. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Shamim. I've really enjoyed chatting with you and learnt from you and we've gone from your music to lots of different things that we've talked about. It's yeah. been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. It was, I enjoyed it very much. And if people want to find out more of Shamim's music, access more of her music, again, it's shamimmusic.com and it is available on the, usual, on the usual music platforms. Thank you also to our listeners. We are grateful for your support. And you can continue to support us by sharing an episode with a friend. To keep up to date with new episodes, follow Mind and Soul Matters on social media and on your preferred podcast app. Or you can listen to episodes on our website, mindandsoulmatters.podbean.com. A special shout out this month to Baha'i Blog for their support and collaboration. Carlos Taid, we've loved working with you. We we'll leave you today with another fabulous song from Shamim, Under One Sun. Ooh, oh, oh. It takes just one moment, just one dream, cause you know oh, we all need to be loved. We come from one ancestor, just one father and one earth mother wonder one son
we good but why